If you've been paying attention to German news recently, you may be aware of something that the German media are calling the K question. This is something which should normally be quite boring, but has suddenly become a huge drama of soap opera proportions. Elections to the Bundestag are due in September of this year, and because Angela Merkel is stepping down, whatever the result, we will have a new Chancellor. Her party needs to decide who is to be their nomination for Chancellor if they win. And that is the K in K question, the German word for Chancellor, and the German word for candidate. And because this is German, we can put those two words together to make Chancellor candidate. At the moment, the two main choices are Markus Zerder and Armin Laschet. At the beginning of the pandemic, it became very clear that both men were trying to prove their leadership skills. They took very different approaches to the pandemic, and it seems that Zerder might have won that argument. So Zerder is the natural choice then. Well, not necessarily. I plan to discuss the way that Merkel's party is set up in a future video, but basically thanks to the way that things work, a politician from Bavaria, which Söder is, has a hard time being accepted as a chancellor candidate for that party. And for other reasons, Zerda might not be the best choice. His handling of the pandemic may have met with reasonable levels of public approval, but some of his other policies have been rather controversial. And while both Zerda and Laschet have said in public that they would like a swift and amicable resolution to this, the press are saying that behind the scenes, that's not happening. In fact, Der Spiegel magazine even went so far as to publish this image. Don't worry, it's obviously photoshopped, but by all accounts, not all that far from the truth. Okay, but let's leave that drama to one side for a moment, because what I really want to explain is how a chancellor is elected. And technically, the answer is they're not, at least not by the public. In a parliamentary system like Germany's, the head of government is not directly elected. Technically, we, the voters, elect representatives. The individuals that we elect get seats in the Bundestag, and that is where our involvement ends. It's the Bundestag, not the public, that actually votes for a chancellor. One or more candidates are proposed, the Bundestag votes, and the candidate that has the support of more than 50% of the Bundestag can become chancellor. The chancellor doesn't even have to be one of the elected representatives. In theory, any adult German citizen could be chancellor. In practice, though, it's nearly always a representative from the largest party in the Bundestag. So really, there's no requirement for the parties to nominate a chancellor candidate before the election. But the biggest parties, at least, normally will, because whatever the technical reality, in practice, voters normally do think in terms of who they would like to see as chancellor. And that's understandable, because the chancellor actually has a great deal of influence over how the country is run. Even though they are in the same party, sort of, but that's the subject of that future video I mentioned, Laschet and Zerda will likely have very different policies in mind. So the big parties, the ones with an actual chance of winning, will nominate chancellor candidates who will be the face of their respective parties for the election campaign. Merkel's party is in the process of choosing theirs. The other big party, the SPD, don't normally announce their chancellor candidate until much closer to the election. And one of the smaller parties wants me as their chancellor candidate. Ah, wait, no. Actually, one of their many, many chancellor candidates. So that's flattering. Tradition demands that I now tell you that if you are eligible to vote, you must do so, and anybody who doesn't is stupid and doesn't deserve democracy. But do you know what? I think that's your decision to make. If you care about who wins, then definitely do vote. It's not mandatory to make your voice heard, but it is a right that you have. Thank you.